church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. What can I say? How beautiful. Enjoyed it immensely. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. How is your faith today, brothers and sisters? Where are you in your relationship with Jesus? His time is closing up. Things are in a crazy way. You know, there was a book once written in 1984. I think it's here. It came a little late, but it's here. <laughs> Teaching people to uh, rat on their neighbor. You know, this world's gone crazy. Up people everywhere you look. I mean, the, the medical industry in our own nation is a mess. People walking away from jobs that they've had for years because they're being forced to do things that their conscience don't agree with. Um, freedom means freedom, does it not? Jesus Christ woos, right? He loves. He doesn't force. He doesn't whip. There's a big difference there, you know? When you see the spirit of somebody pushing and shoving, it's not the spirit of Jesus. It's not the spirit that this country was um, brought about on. You know, they came apart, they came away from persecution to come to this nation. It was founded on two wonderful principles. I think you know what they are. You know, where we are not our own, the Bible tells us we're bought with a price, right? And it's, I mean, uh, Really, the only decision you make is, is who's going to be your master. And really, you only have one decision, in my opinion, because by default, you make the other. So, it's Christ or death. It's that simple, right? Amen. Let us turn to, um, well, you don't even need to turn there. Isaiah 30 and 21 says, this is the way walking in it. Isn't that the way it is? It's not a force, right? That's not a push. That's not a shove. God is pleading with us. You know, there's a lot of sorrow in this world, but nobody knows sorrow like Jesus. Bible calls him the man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Okay? And Jesus could understand sorrow at the depth that he could because he loves like no man ever loved. Do you understand that? We don't have that capacity. Not in and of ourselves. We don't have it. With Jesus and his blessed Holy Spirit that he wants to not just have with us, but in us, to lead us and guide us, we can have this kind of capacity. We need to be concerned for our brother, but not in a way to rat him out, but to lift him up. Somebody's tripping and falling, we don't walk on them. We're Christians. Jesus has shown us the way. You know, when his, his disciples screwed up, what did he do? He picked them up. He showed them the way. He didn't beat tar and feather. Can you imagine Judas coming to you in the garden and kissing you as the sign of you're the one that they need to take away and be led to a, a mock trial and the crucifixion? And what does Jesus say? Friend. Friend. Who? That's beyond me. I'm not that guy. I want to sock him in the teeth. That's who I am. But I need Jesus. And you need Jesus. Because we can't walk this walk 
in and of ourselves. It's just not going to happen. We may think we can do something, but we can do nothing. The Bible says, without Him, we can do nothing. So I think, as you read through and you study this Bible, what God is trying to teach us is dependency. And I think this mic is falling apart, so maybe I'll have to grab some of those. Donald, you want to kill this thing? I don't want to. All these fellow, these eleven guys, 
They'll do it, but I won't do it. And he meant what he said, didn't he? He really believed what he said. He may have said the right thing, but it was the wrong dependency. And we all have the same problem. We depend upon self. And as long as we depend upon self, we can be threatened or flattered out of God's will. Because our focus is what's going on here, right? Not God's thought. This is, this is how we sin. We sin because we forget God. It's really that simple. I mean, whether you intentionally turn your back, okay, or however you do it, you forget God because you can't sin in the presence of God, having a, a relationship with God, being face to face. You can't. So I ask you to think about how you're going to go forward in these days that we have because, you know, if a simple little girl can push Peter into denying his Lord, I mean, that ought to be a wake-up call for all of us, all right? We're talking about the real deal here. I mean, imagine for a moment, somebody ran in here with a machine gun, right? And they just was ready to start blasting people. And anybody who didn't deny Jesus was going to be blasted. You really think you'd just sit there? You think you'd get freaked out a little bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, just think about the dependency. That's what we really need to do. We need to, we need to cash all our chips in on Jesus. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a lot easier said than done. There's a gambling vernacular that's great for the church, right? <laughs> I've grown up in this world, man. My name means of the world, okay? It's a curse and a blessing at the same time. And, you know, it's a checkup and it's like, ooh, yeah, we know who you are. You know? You guys get the point, right? Let us not be flattered or threatened out of God's will. Let us turn to uh, Acts 24. It's a beautiful book of Acts. Chapter 24.
dependency upon Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. That's how he overcame it all. Because he did nothing in and of himself, Jesus said. He followed his Father. And he obeyed. And we as Americans think this word obey means you got to struggle and do all these things. But what the word obey really means is to listen intently. Amen. And if you listen intently, that means you really care about what some, something that's being said, right? You love and adore. And I feel my wife's eyes stinging me and sometimes I don't hear her as well as I should. <laughs> Although I claim to adore her, and I do, um, I fail to hear things sometimes. <laughs> and I don't know if my problem is, uh, maybe sometimes it is lack of respect. I don't know. I hope not. But um, maybe it's I think too loud sometimes. You ever think too loud? You think so loud, you can't hear somebody speak? Do you really listen? Are you a good listener? Or do you just wait for your turn to talk? Think about it. Do you do battle with people on the Bible? Hopefully not. That's not the way. Jesus didn't do battle like that. He just spoke the truth in love. And it's convicting. These little girls singing that song. Wow. That hit me hard. The love of Jesus. You know, it's his patience that breaks me. That tears me up. Because I'll tell you what, if the shoe was on the other foot, I wouldn't be so patient with God. I'd be like, you rascal. You know? I mean, think about how he deals with us. So warm, so tender, so loving, so patient. Do we deal with each other like that? Yeah, we all want to go home. What does the Bible say about God's people? They're going to be known by their what? Fruits. Their love, yeah. Their fruits, their love. But this love that it says is not a natural love. It's agape love. How do we attain agape love? It's when we sell out lock, stock, and barrel to Jesus. Cash it all in. And it's Him that we're dependent upon. No more does it matter to me because I'm dead. And if I'm dead, I can't be, I can't be offended. Right? If you're dead, you can't be offended. Because they're offending God. You think Paul was offended? He was heartbroken that Felix... You don't think Paul didn't know that Felix was sitting there like this? Paul knew because he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Words that, that rattled right into Felix's heart. Right? And he just wants to wash it away. Ah, just go back to your cell and I'll call you back when there's a convenient season. You know, you can't be an almost Christian. There's no almost Christian. Almost Christian is like being almost pregnant. You know? You either are or you aren't. Period. There's no, yeah, maybe. Turn to Acts 26. Twenty-six and uh, twenty-seven. Acts twenty-six and verse twenty-seven. And here's King Agrippa, right? King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. This is Paul speaking again. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. At least he was honest. Almost thou persuadest me. How many people do you think that will be 
not in heaven because they walked up to the door. They just walked up to the door. How easy it is for the devil to steal away things. You know, you're living your life and God does something that knocks you clean off your feet, right? Causes you to see things in a whole different way. Maybe it's the first time you've ever walked in face in a church. And God is speaking to your heart. And we don't know if God's ever going to speak again to your heart the way he does that. And the devil, oh, that didn't really happen. You know, I had whatever it was, you just dust yourself off and go on living your life the way you always have, getting what you've always got. That's where we are today. I, I, I don't... I don't understand why we're not where we ought to be unless we just don't really love God like we say we do. You know? Maybe we just really don't love God like we say we do. You know, I learned as a very young man, I don't know too much, but I do know this much for absolute surety. When all is said and done, there'll be a whole lot more said than done. So mouths are easy to run. But uh, who occupies your land? You know, who occupies the real estate of your heart? What do you have in there? Where's that buried treasure? Because you know, if, if God owns 90% of your heart, but there's 10% of it that you hold back, because the human instinct is to what? Hold back the best part. You know, I'm going to give you a cookie, brother, but I, don't, I know there's more chocolate chips than this one. I'm going to you the other one. Right? Think about it. It starts as when you're very young. But listen, if, 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 if the devil should own property in the center of your heart, he has the right to get there. Right? And he tramples, tramples right through God's territory to get there. You follow me? And God is, he says in the Bible that he's no respecter of persons. God wants it all or nothing. All or nothing. Didn't Jesus give all? He gave it all. He didn't hold anything back. I can't imagine. That's fine. I can't imagine. I love trains anyway. It's cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Think about how he had to come down to come to us just to make himself an embryo to be put inside of Mary. Think that had to be painful for God? You know, that's like backwards of backwards. And then to live in the flesh, in this flesh, this is how Jesus lived, in this flesh. You know how you get tired, hungry? Jesus was all of those things. And suffered even more because he, the Bible says he was tempted in all ways like we are. But yet even more. Because he was God. Right? Can you be tempted to turn somebody to smoke? You know, because they cut you off? No, I don't think so. You may like to, but you can't. And he never sinned. Walked in this flesh. Conquered sin, death, and the devil. I, there's no other way. Jesus says, I am the way. Why is he the way? No way. No other road. There isn't anything else. God only accepts absolute perfection. Right? Absolute perfection is only found in Jesus Christ. If you've lied once, you're a liar. If you've stolen anything, you're a thief. That's the way it is. Isn't that the way the law reads? G 
Jesus is forgiving, loving, and kind beyond imagination. And his hands are always out for you. All of heaven is cheering you to be dependent upon God. You know, the devil was once Lucifer, held a high position. Somehow, he coveted the position of Jesus. The Bible calls that the mystery of iniquity. It can't be explained. If you say you can explain it, then you're a liar. <laughs> but pride. Pride. I don't know what your problem is, brothers and sisters, but I can tell you that I believe that all of us, that's the problem. In your heart. It is. It's this evil nature that we got because of our great grandparents, Adam and Eve, that ate from that tree and gave us this knowledge that we don't need, didn't need. And it causes us to be selfish and hateful and unkind and impatient. And unloving. But Jesus is the way out, brothers and sisters. He is the way out. Let's turn to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3.
ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm, right? So they obeyed God, right? What about, don't you think there was other Jews that were there? We don't hear anything about them, do we?